Dear viewers, welcome to today's class. Today we will be looking at a poem called A Revocation written by Sir Thomas White. In today's class we will be looking at how White reflects on the life and times of Tudor England and also at the critical aspects of the poem. A Revocation is a short poem by Sir Thomas White. The poem is about the state of his relationship with a woman. Just as the title suggests, it is a poem which implies the annulment of a marriage or the end of a relationship. This poem can be read very closely with his life and it is also a representation of the life in Tudor court. Sir Thomas White is considered as the most representative poet of the 16th century England. He is considered as the ambassador of the age and is known as a lyrical poet. His fame rests on his intensive work on the genre of sonnet and he is credited with the introduction of the sonnet form into English literature. Considered as one of the earliest poets of the English Renaissance, he was responsible for many innovations in English poetry. Along with Henry Howard, the Earl of Surrey, he developed and introduced the sonnet from Italy into England. The underlying theme of most of his poems is the trials of romantic love and the devotion of the suitor to an unavailable or cruel mistress. His poems also stand apart because they are said to be scornful, satirical indictments of the hypocrisies and flat out pandering required of courtiers ambitious to advance at the Tudor court. Even being part of the system, Wyatt through his work was able to look critically at their life and times. His lyrics show tenderness of feeling and purity of diction. He is one of the originators of the convention in love poetry according to which the mistress is painted as hard-hearted and cruel. The poem A Revocation is an example of the style of writing of White. This poem characterizes all the aspects associated with his work. The poem, just as the title signifies, is a look at a relationship that is about to be cancelled or annulled. The title suggests a finality and given the general themes of his poetry and the age, it refers to the theme of infidelity and the breach of trust. In the poem, the speaker addresses a female which is suggested by the address to a mistress and the repetition of the word farewell indicates an end. This poem has many close resemblances to his life and hence a look at his biography is important to understand the poem. However, it could be a clear indication of the kind of the courtly life that was prevalent in the Tudor court under the rule of Henry VIII. Infidelity and extramarital affairs was a part of the life of the early 16th century England. As a poet and man well versed with the ways of the world, it was inevitable that this becomes the predominant theme of Wyatt's work also. The poem A Revocation is an apt illustration of these aspects. Thomas White was born to Henry and Anne White at Allington Castle in Kent. His father was well established in the court of King Henry VII and secured a place for his son at the court in 1516, five years after the young Henry VIII ascended to the throne. Thomas White was educated at St. John's College, Cambridge. He married Elizabeth Brooke in 1520. But as is characteristic of the age, it was not a happy union because of her alleged adultery and the young Wyatt separated from his wife by 1525. However, this led to the commencement of a relationship with Anne Boleyn, 
which was to cause him much distress both in the political and personal realm. Thomas Wyatt was a witty, handsome, educated and diplomatic young man. Wyatt travelled extensively as a diplomat for the English monarchy. His first mission was to France in 1526 and along with his political work, White also studied the works of contemporary French writers. In 1527, he went on a mission to Rome. Although politically his efforts were not a success, White was able to tour Italy and again immerse himself in the contemporary literature of the host nation. It is believed that while he was in Italy, Henry VIII began to assert his interest in Anne Boleyn. White's next position was a three-year posting based in Calais, which conveniently took him from court and thus out of the proximity of Anne Boleyn and her loyal suitor Henry VIII. By 1532, Anne was granted a title as Marchioness of Pembroke. She was the king's mistress by this time and secretly married Henry VIII in 1533, five months before the birth of their daughter. The interest of Wyatt and King Henry VIII in Anne Boleyn complicates many matters for Wyatt as he was a part of the court of the king. But Wyatt began liaison with Elizabeth Darrell in 1536 which lasted until his death in 1542. Although there were points where he caused displeasure to his king, he was knighted in 1535 and died of fever at a time when the executioner's axe was frequently the end for many at court. As a man of letters, he was a very crucial part of the king's court and was highly respected except for his unfortunate affair with Anne Boleyn. In the poem, A Revocation, we get a glimpse into this aspect of the life in those times. The Tudor age, along with its many complexities, was the subject of Wyatt's poetry. So, it is necessary to have a look at the events that were making waves there and then. Henry VIII became more obsessed with obtaining a male heir and Queen Anne grew to be a burden as like Queen Catherine before her, she did not produce a son. When Catherine died, Anne's days were numbered. If both wives were dead, a third wife and her children would be viewed as wholly legitimate, unlike the secretly wed Anne Boleyn. Henry seized the opportunity to take up with another woman in Anne's court, Jane Seymour. Anne and five alleged lovers were imprisoned in the Tower of London for adultery as a bid to discredit Anne Boleyn. Wyatt was one of those imprisoned and he was most perturbed that he was not the only man accused. He had, however, long ended his liaison with Anne and had warned the king before the marriage that she was not a suitable queen. Wyatt was the only prisoner to escape these charges with his life. The other men and queen and herself were executed. Wyatt likely witnessed her beheading, which took place 21 days before Henry VIII married Jane Seymour. Henry VIII visited Wyatt at his home in Allington two months later. Wyatt's diplomatic skill had enabled him to survive the king's wrath and violent actions. Wyatt witnessed another execution of someone close to him at the mercy of Henry's cruel whim. His patron and mentor, Thomas Cromwell, was executed in July Henry's brutality becomes most evident here as it was also the day he chose to marry Catherine Howard. Wyatt was again arrested in 1541 and charged with treason. He admitted the charges using his passion and anger as excuse for his outburst against the 
king. He faced his sentence at the mercy of the king, but his punishment was still a malicious one. On the orders of Queen Catherine Howard, White was ordered to resume his union with his wife, from whom he had separated 16 years earlier, and to abandon his longtime partner, Elizabeth Darrell. This seems a cruel and unusual punishment meted out by a monarchy that was riddled with infidelity and immorality. Despite the challenging and violent times of the Tudor reign, White was able to survive three terms of imprisonment and avoid execution. These trials and tribulation become a major theme of his work too. viewers now let us have a look at the pawn it is a fact that is acknowledged by many critics that white highlighted the beauty and cruelty of the tudor age along with its complexity disorder and mystery his work is sometimes bleak sometimes desolate but always evocative of the time and situation in which he found himself the poem, A Revocation, fits into this mold from all aspects. It is a poem of 25 lines with 5 stanzas. From the title of the poem itself, we are aware that the poet is talking about infidelity. There are hints throughout the poem about the double face of love. It is an address to his former lover and it is a farewell to his unjust love who double-crossed him, who could not keep her promise. There is an underlying tone of disillusionment in the poem. He is disillusioned by the promise of love and now he is bidding farewell to his love who has been unfaithful. The opening lines itself places the themes of infidelity and breach of faith as is evident in the bold statement that faith is dead. The next argument is that the mistress or the person who is addressed to by the poet has lied as is indicated by the words truth is fled. The question should I be led by doubleness indicates that he has been cheated by this person. Right from the opening we get the clue that this poem is about the events from his life. The revocation that he talks about could be the annulment of his marriage with Elizabeth Brooke by 1525 on account of her infidelity. The lines suggestive of this aspect could be, I promised you and you promised me to be as true as I would be. The use of the words promise to each other could indicate the wedding vows. As it is said further down that it is him who is bidding farewell because of her double heart. He calls her mistress by using words such as unkind, unjust and unkissed, indicating the extent of the infidelity. He says that it is not in his mind to bid farewell or to forsake his love, but the unkindness of this lady has forced him to bid farewell. These lines give the justification of his act. He talks about how she had promised to be his and how she has betrayed his wits and again he bids her farewell. The 
poem clearly suggests similarities with Wyatt's life, particularly his relationship with the women in his life. However, many lines in the poem suggest two such relationships, one with his wife Elizabeth Brooke and the other with Anne Boleyn, who later became the mistress of the king Henry VIII. It is clear from the poem that it is the mistress who has cheated him and the earlier part of the poem refers to his wife and towards the end of the poem when he says, Farewell unkissed, there is a suggestion that he could be referring to his relationship with Anne Boleyn who chose Henry VIII. It has to be noted that Wyatt started this relationship only after his divorce from his first wife. Thus, there are clear indications that this poem evokes his first encounters with love with all its complication of the Tudor times. The underlying theme of the poem is infidelity in keeping with the prevalent practices of his times. This is indicated through words like doubleness and double heart. The wrong on the part of the mistress is clear through the use of words such as unkind and unjust. The repetition of the word farewell is another striking aspect of the poem. For instance, it is repeated three times. Farewell my part, farewell unjust, farewell unkinst. The uses of these three are significant. In the first, he takes leave, then he says that the farewell is because of her unjust behavior and the final farewell has an ambiguity to it as he calls her unkissed. This could suggest that he could be referring to Anne Boleyn. Like themes in all his works, the theme of the poem also indicates his preoccupation with the Tudor court. The Tudor court was filled with change. Henry VIII's reign was in a time of great political social, national and international upheaval. White was central to all of these areas as a lover, a courtier, an ambassador and a diplomat. Many of White's works record the setting and pastimes of the Tudor court with their message surrounding human behavior. The poem Revocation has certain similarities with another of his poem, Whoso List to Hunt. Despite being a translation of a sonnet by Petrarch, it encompasses the Tudor age in its metaphor of deer hunting as a comparison to the pursuit of a lady. Such close parallels have been drawn with the poem and White's challenging relationship with Anne Boleyn, who was subsequently courted and married by King Henry VIII. That the poem could be said to exemplify the age. Similarly, the metaphor of falconry used in Lux, My Fair Falcon, serves to utilize the popular pastime of the age with the popular issue of changing political and social loyalties. Dear viewers, let's now have a look at the major themes in Wyatt's poetry. Thomas Wyatt seems to have concluded that change is inevitable, as illustrated in his other poems like Diverse Dark Use, but also that change without direction can be dangerous, if not deadly, as in his poem In My Galley Charged. In this poem, a revocation also we also find aspects of change. White suggests that change is natural and inevitable, but nonetheless dangerous and sometimes fatal. Several of White's greatest works are songs. As a popular court entertainment and a fashionable way to demonstrate one's verbal wit and musical prowess, White made much use of the ballad and the rondeau to show his skill and to deliver his opinion on issues of the day. The poem that we have looked at, A Revocation, is also a similar example. Music was an integral part of the court of Henry VIII. Henry himself was an accomplished musician 
and singer composing and performing his own ballads and songs. The songs that best expresses wild sentiment could be the ballads They Flee From Me and Blame Not My Lute which typify White's varying position in the court. Songs such as Madam Without In Many Words and Forget Not Yet have a tone of hostility built within the traditional form of amusement. White's skill was in taking the elevated and artistic form of wanted Italian scholar Petrarch's sonnets and creating a uniquely individual interpretation redolent with the despair, tension and bitterness of the Tudor court. White was not merely translating Petrarch, he was fashioning a new approach to poetry in English and utilizing the elevated structures of an earlier time to develop and highlight the drama and tensions of his era. White's influence on the development of English literature has been unquestioned for many years. He is credited with bringing the Petrarchan sonnet form into English with its translation of the Italian works. However, in recent years, critics have begun to appreciate that White's contribution is more than as just a translator of the works of an already great writer. White took Petrarch's form and words as a basis to represent his own culture and his own world. White was a scholar across the history of philosophy and writing. He was as familiar with the works of ancient Seneca and Plutarch as well as the more contemporary like Chaucer and Petrarch. As earlier critics have suggested, he was not merely a poor translator of lyrical works into a still jarring tongue. Dear viewers, let's now have a look at his major works. None of White's poems had been published in his lifetime with the exception of a few poems in a miscellany entitled The Court of Venus. His first published work was Certain Psalms, which was published in 1549, which were a metrical translation of the penitential Psalms. It wasn't until 1557, 15 years after White's death, that a number of his poetry appeared alongside the poetry of Henry Howard, the Earl of Surrey, in printer Richard Tottle's Songs and Sonnets, written by the Right Honourable Lord Henry Howard, late Earl of Surrey and other. Until modern times, it was simply called Songs and Sonnets, but now it is generally known as Tottle's Miscellany. The rest of White's poetry, lyrics and satires remained in manuscript until the 19th and 20th centuries rediscovered then. He took subject matter from Petrarch's sonnets, but his rhyme schemes made a significant departure. Petrarch's sonnets consist of an octave rhyming ABBA ABBA after a turn in the sense by assisted with various rhyme schemes. White employs the Petrarchan octave, but his most common assisted scheme is CDDCEE. -E. This marks the beginning of an exclusively English contribution to sonnet structure, that is, three quatrains and a closing couplet. In addition to imitations of work by the classical writers Seneca and Horace, he experimented in stanza forms including the Ronto, epigrams, terza rema, ottava rema, songs, satires and also with mono rhyme. Triplets with refrains, quatrains with different length of line and rhyme schemes, quatrains with codas and the French forms of Dussain and Tresain. White introduced contemporaries to his Poulter's measure, 
which is Alexandrian couplets of 12 syllabic iambic lines altering with a 14er or a 14 syllable line and is acknowledged as a master of the iambic tetrameter. Thus, we can see that Wyatt has experimented a lot with the structure of the English poetry. Wyatt, along with Surrey, was the first to introduce the sonnet into English with its characteristic final rhyming couplet. Wyatt and Surrey often share the title of father of the English sonnet. Dear viewers, today we have looked at Thomas Wyatt's A Revocation, the poem in detail and also how Thomas Wyatt has made his contribution to English literature as such. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you and see you again.